and welcome to the Frit VT user group and the Facebook group live. We just tuned in a minute early just to give people a chance to come in and know that we're alive and well. We have a great session today where I'm going to be interviewing one of our members who won our launch kickoff contest. And we are looking forward to hearing how Nancy built her speaking business. Because <laughs> many people in our Frit VT user group and many people in our Facebook group, especially, would like to be professional speakers. And when I first heard Nancy's story, I was very interested and said, hey, when we've got the Build Your Business Month, will you come and tell us your story? So I did the research for you. So people are just slowly coming into the group. And we know that many of you will be watching this afterwards when it just lives in our Facebook group. But I'm just chatting away, giving people time to come in. And don't worry, we can't see you. We can see that you're with us. We just can't see you. So if you're sitting there in your underwear, it doesn't matter. In fact, we might be very entertained to see what you do wear when you go to bed. So now that our audience is slowly coming in, we have a few people let us honor them so this is the official welcome to the frit vt live and or the frit vt group and the facebook group on powerful presentations and successful sales group i today we will be hearing from nancy depsick when i did the promo i said she was a csp because i believe <laughs> that she earned it but she told me no not yet what can i say uh, <laughs> hidden in the background is paul so before we introduce nancy and get going paul can you tell us how everyone can ask questions and interact with us absolutely um since you're joining us on facebook you'll see the comment section to the right in that comment section, you're more than welcome to put your short specific questions that will be answered throughout the call and don't be shy, get them in sooner rather than later so we have plenty of time to answer those questions for you. And what you might like to do is just tell us where you are in your speaking career, like beginner, intermediate, advanced, uh, want to be a professional speaker, are a professional speaker or no, I just like to speak for fun. Whatever you want to tell us, we will, we can see, and the audience will be able to see later. So with that, Nancy, welcome. You are a very important part of the Facebook group. So why don't you start with a snapshot of your life until it got to the point where you had to and wanted to and were desperate to launch your speaking career? Well, thanks, Patricia. I appreciate that. Uh, I guess it kind of all started in the early 90s when I met a gentleman and we started a business together. I had a relationship with him and we decided to start our own business. We decided to go into real, real estate investing. And we started small in Chicago where we bought these old houses. We rehabbed them. We sold them. And back in the 1990s, you could not miss we started making some pretty good money. From there, we bought apartment buildings and the money kept growing. And I started living a lifestyle that I didn't even know existed. Uh, Patricia, I grew up on the south side of Chicago. So very small house, two bedrooms with six people. So I never knew a lifestyle like this existed. Suddenly I'm traveling the world to places I never even heard of before. We're taking limos to operas, opening night at the opera. We're going to these exotic parties. We're drinking $500 bottles of champagne. It was an amazing lifestyle. It was just crazy. And then we were turning 60. So we thought, well, we'll retire early. We're going to cash in on the property in Chicago, but we wanted it to be better. So we decided to reinvest it in commercial real estate because that's where all the money was. 
And the best place to invest at that time was Florida. So we sold everything in Chicago, bought strip malls in Florida and apartment buildings and had this little empire going down in Naples and Cape Coral and that whole area. Life was good for about an, about a year. And then 2008 hit. And overnight, it was all gone. All of it. I uh, lost all my properties. The relationship devoured. It, it just was destroyed. I lost my home. I lost my car. I lost my business. I lost my savings. Everything was gone because of that 2008 recession. So I moved into an old apartment. I had no furniture. So my girlfriend loaned me a folding table and a folding chair so I could set up my computer. I had a computer and I had a mattress. I had no dishes, so I went to the local Target. I bought a small bowl and a package of plasticware and I sat on the floor eating my meals. And if you've ever been, as most of us have been through a devastating time in our life, you sit there and you think, what just happened here? I, I, I don't even know where I am or how I got here. So little by little, I started meeting people, reinventing my life. And out of those ashes and out of that mess, I grew my speaking business that I now call Unshakable Success. Wow. Now, there's a, a part of me who I, of course, grew up with hardworking parents who did well and bettered themselves, but I can't imagine $500 bottles of champagne. The only <laughs> time I got anything close to that was having dinner with Alan Weiss. And I don't <laughs> think that he ordered a $700 bottle of wine. I said, I don't drink, but I'm trying this. Yes. <laughs> so I can show off occasionally. It was crazy. It was a crazy lifestyle. Uh, we were together for 15 years and um, 10 of those years were just uh, at a level that I didn't even know existed. It was crazy. But but overnight, literally, just all gone. Wow. You know, I, I can't imagine. So were you speaking before this? Well, no. My jobs before, I was a school teacher and I was in sales. So in essence, I was always up in front of people, but never speaking. And I never wanted to speak. Uh, obviously, the first thing I had to do was get a job. And yeah. so I'll tell you, Patricia, the real first thing I did is I got rid of all the negativity in my life because I couldn't get out of bed in the morning and look for a job. Do you remember back at that time, huge companies were closing, thousands of people were being laid off? I couldn't survive like that. So I stopped listening to talk radio. I stopped watching the news. I stopped my newspaper. And I stopped hanging around with anyone who told me I couldn't do it. And so I started surrounding myself with positive everything. And I got a job managing a bridal department at Bloomingdale's. Never wanted a job like that, but it paid the bills. Yeah. And I believe in a rule of three. If something comes back to you three times, you need to look into it. You may not do it, yeah. but you at least need to stop and research it. So the third time I heard the word Toastmasters, mm. I went home and Googled it because I didn't know what it was group of people where you give speeches, you get evaluated. And at that time I was looking for anything to do to relieve the emotional pain. And I thought, what the heck? I found one club that worked for me because I worked retail, so I had crazy hours. So I found one club that if I got the early shift on every other Monday, I could take the brown line to this little church and at seven o'clock at night, they would have a Toastmasters meeting. And when I walked in, all of for an hour and a half, my emotional pain was gone. For an hour and a half, I got to chat with people and talk to people, and they didn't know the mess that was going on in my life. And so I started talking about, what do you do when life knocks you to your knees? What do you do when you face a challenge in your life so great? How do you get through it? So I talked about or oh, maybe a, a movie I saw that was an inspiration to me, 
or a little old lady that I volunteered for and how she helped me see things a little differently or an article I read about gratitude. And then one day I was walking to work and I got a phone call. And this woman at the other end said, Nancy, I heard about your speeches. What do you charge? Well, how had she heard about your speeches? At this point, you were just speaking in Toastmasters? Yes, but I'll tell you what happened. Somebody in my club signed me up after three months into the club, signed me up for a contest. Ah. I didn't want to be in the contest. I didn't know what I was doing yet. But what happens in Toastmasters, when you went at one level, you go to another level. You're in front of a different group. You're at a different place. You're in front of, you're doing on a different stage. You're doing your speech on a different stage. And especially in the international speech contest, you have to win at something like six or seven levels. Mm. So you're always moving up and you're in front of different people and other people hear you and your speech gets better and better because you're being evaluated. So she heard about somebody who had seen me in one of the contests. Well, this is very interesting because a lot of our Facebook group members are in fact uh, Toastmasters. So this is really reassuring that actually just Toastmasters can get you launched into speaking. Toastmasters was the deciding factor for me because prior to Toastmasters, I wasn't even gonna speak. Mm. And actually a woman that I haven't even seen since that first Toastmasters group, she's the one that got me involved in the contest. And I've reached out to her to thank her for that because if she didn't do that, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. Wow. And, but it was through those contests and getting in front of different people. And I'm telling you, it's nerve wracking and it's scary. And yes, you, I probably lost more contests than I won, but the contests that I did win got me in front of different groups. And from there, I met somebody who invited me to an advanced Toastmasters group. And that's the one I belong to now. And that advanced Toastmasters group allows you to give longer speeches, amazing evaluations, and so you get better and better and better. But my speaking career really got started because of Toastmasters. All right, good. Now let's go back to that first, how much do you charge? Well, most of us have no idea how to answer that question. And it's still tricky. Uh, I, th I think it's still tricky. So the first time this woman says, what do you charge? I sincerely had never even thought about doing speaking as a business. And so the thing that came out of my mouth was, I said, $100. Yeah. And she said, well, I can afford that. So my first speaking job was at Riverside Public Library in a suburb of Chicago for $100. Mm. Uh, then, you know, my feathers are puffed up. I'm ready to, to, to start my new career as a speaker. And I'll keep in mind, I'm still working full time. Yeah. So I'm doing these contests and, and Toastmasters and trying to start this career evenings and weekends. And, mm -hmm. and being in retail, I didn't always even have weekends. So um, what happened is once I knew I wanted to do that, well, let me back up a little bit. I made a phone call because now I, I am going to be the speaker. So I called someone and I says, you know, let me come in and let me speak to you and speak to your group. And she says, great. She says, send me the link to your website. Uh, what did she say? Your promo kit, your, your, your videos, your book. I got nothing, nothing. And it was probably one of a thousand times I wanted to throw in the towel and say, I can't do this. But instead, take a deep, deep breath. I looked at that long list and I says, I'm picking one, yeah, just one. And that is a very important point because especially when we get started or you, you go to a, an NSA chapter or a convention and everyone is telling you, oh, you need to do this. You can't do it all. So that's right. very wise. Start with one and complete it. Very good. Yes, because you get sidetracked. Somebody says you have to have a book. And so you start writing the book and, oh, no, you have to have a LinkedIn page. And so you have, so pick one and finish it. So I picked a website. Good. But what I did is I knew you had to have a photo. I started researching other speakers' websites, yours included. And I saw you had great photos and you had video and you had books and you had engagements. And again, I had nothing. So I stopped to think about what I did have. 
I had a Toastmasters group. And so I sent out an email and I said, does anybody know a photographer to help me get started on my website? Ruth came back and she says, I don't know a photographer, but I know a butcher who takes pictures on the side and he only charges $50. I know. Well, I can afford that. I can afford $50. Those are the pictures you'll see on my website now. He was and obviously so, a great amateur photographer. But what actually, I want to reinforce, though, but what I want to reinforce, Nancy, is that one, how very wise it was. One, it's, it's start with one and ask your contacts, uh, you know, who can you recommend me to? So good. But you were going to say about the butcher? Oh, I was going to say, actually, he was all the we got a group of, of speakers together, six of us. And actually, the photos were terrible. And so we gave everybody their money back. But it was fifty dollars. So what I said was, instead of me taking my money back, can we take pictures in a different venue? And that uh -huh. made all the difference. So don't give up. If it doesn't work the first time, don't give up. Be creative. OK, good, good, good. All right, so now you had a photo. Now, how did you get together your website? Did you do it yourself? Did you find someone to do it? No, the key is, is to recognize your weaknesses and accept them and don't make excuses for them. Uh, technology and creating things on the website, that's that's not me. So I asked the butcher. Yeah. I said, will you do a website for me? And he says, sure, but I charge $180. Good, I can afford that. Yeah. So we sat down, but I had nothing to say. Mm. So I came up with three pages yeah. and looking at other websites, I saw everybody had testimonials. Yeah. I didn't have testimonials. So I went to my Toastmasters CC booklet. This is where your peers recommend or evaluate you. Yes. And they write what they think of your speech. Yes. I went back there, and those were my first testimonials. Perfect. So Perfect. you start in small, small steps, very small increments. Mm -hmm. And then eventually you get the real testimonials, and you get better photos. And I started a blog, and so now one of my tabs says blog. And little by little, but stay focused and finish what you started. Good. Great advice. Now, Paul, do we have any questions or comments? Not at the moment, no. Okay, good. Well, feel free if you have any specific <laughs> comments or certainly you can give Nancy a thumbs up, great job or inspiring, whatever you want to say is great. All right, wonderful. All right, so you're developing your website. Again, I really appreciate your focus because I know it's very easy to get distracted. All right, so you develop the website. Now, and you, of course, had your day job. Never quit your day job too soon. Right. All right, then what happened? So basically what happened, I still have my day job. I was doing the, the, the speaking I started out with, rotaries and chambers, and I started speaking for free because, in essence, you're still practicing your speech. Mm -hmm. So I got a keynote speech. Actually, it's the one that took me all the way to the International Speech Contest a couple of years ago for Toastmasters. And so I started with that one. It was simply about a roller coaster story, a story about how my brother tricked me into my first roller coaster ride. It's funny. It's a funny story. And then I go on to the roller coaster of life and the ups and downs of life. Mm. So I started to continue my keynote as, again, what do you do when you are facing your own challenges in life? And so through Toastmasters and my evaluations, that was getting tweaked. Through doing that speech at Rotaries and at Chambers, I was able to perfect that and get even better with that. Now, now hold then, on one second. Now, how did you, because people often want to know, how did you get the free talks? How did you get the Chambers and Rotaries? My brother is a Rotarian. Okay. Good. <laughs> Good, because I know I started doing this from my hairstyling clients because they belong to Ropley Kiwanis, Lions, Optimist, and uh, and then, of course, uh, Breakfast Clubs. 
So this is it. It's and and I'm sure you did what I did when you're there with the visiting Rotarians. You say, "Here's my card. Give it to your program chair." Yes, and business cards are interesting too. I went through about three or four different business cards before I settled on one that I think is really professional looking. Because again, in the beginning, I didn't know what to say. Mm. So my brother was a Rotarian, and then I asked someone for a recommendation, and then you start calling other Rotaries and say. Dennis from the Buffalo Grove Rotary had this to say, um, this is my topic. Would you be willing for me to come in and speak to some other meetings? And Rotarians are great because they have to bring in a speaker every week. Yeah, and this is what most people overlook. The toughest job for these local meetings is the program chair. You have to get someone somewhat interesting every single week. So mm -hmm. great, perfect. That's exactly right. Continue. And then I did the same thing with the libraries. Riverside Library was the first one to pay me. So I asked her, I knew they had a newsletter that went out because I saw it. And I said, would you be able to write a little blurb about me and my presentation in your newsletter that goes out to other libraries? And then would you be willing to give me a list of those libraries and the contact information? So then I started calling the libraries and said, just like Doris from Riverside Library said in the newsletter, is this a program you would be interested in? So I started doing the library route. And those were paid gigs. Um, again, not a lot at the beginning, but they were better than the free rotary ones. And I'm great at networking. I go to a lot of networking groups and I seek out two, no more than three people that I think can help me advance my business. I talk to them. I ask a lot of questions. I don't tell them what I do. I want to hear what they need. So I talk to them. What do you need? Yeah. What is your profession? What, what um, message is best for your audience? And then I follow up with an email. And it can't all be about me. So in my me email, I say, you know, great meeting you at the such and such event. Uh, basically, I'd like to learn more about you and your business and see how we can help each other. Good. And set up a coffee date. Mm. And then every time you get into an industry, you kind of keep at it. Recently, I got into, and I live in Madison, Wisconsin now, and basically I uh, got into credit unions recently. So I got the credit unions to write a recommendation for me. Always try to put it on LinkedIn if you can, because everybody goes to LinkedIn now and they're all in one place. And then I call other credit unions and say, you know, Jeff from Summit Credit Union had this to say about the presentation I just gave. Is this something you're interested in? Yeah. So that's how I find my leads. Good. And, and you know, what you do when you're hungry, we often, frankly, forget when you're busy. But the principles don't change. And just as you discovered in 2008, you see, in America, Nancy, we suffer from recency bias. In other words, when you're rich and the money's rolling in, you think it's never going to change. And it will. And when you're desperate for business or desperate for a speaking engagement, you think it'll never change and it will. Yes. But what you were doing, so these good habits that you start at the beginning is certainly uh, keep them at every level. You're reminding me, I'm going to go back to my LinkedIn page and put some more <laughs> updated references on. See, I yes. wouldn't have done that if you hadn't mentioned it. Good. I just had a new recommendation posted there, I think a couple days ago, I had somebody write a recommendation for me. Yeah. Uh, but going back to the times when I was first starting, it's hard. It's yeah. very hard because you see everybody else around you, it mm -hmm. appears, being yeah. successful and, and having these great talks and they're making all this money and they seem to know what they're doing and what direction they're going in. And at least for me, I was fumbling. I didn't know. I can't, again, I can't tell you how many times I quit. How many times I said, this is it. I'm, I'm not cut out for this. I'm not good enough for this. I don't, I don't have a valuable enough message. 
And then I'd be walking down the street and someone would stop me and say, oh, I heard your curious speech and it changed my life. Wow. And you think, wow, maybe I should keep doing this. And then you join a contest and you win and you get that goofy little trophy. I have a whole room full of those trophies and you think, wow, I got a trophy for something I said. And oh, then, you be oh, go ahead. Now I was gonna say, at what point though, did your local chapter of the National Speakers Association set in? Because Toastmasters is great, winning contests is great, but if you're gonna make a living, NSA has to step in here somewhere. Well, I never really did join NSA, and I know that's a terrible thing for me to say, but I'll tell you why. I joined Windy City Professional Speakers, yeah. and that's a group of professional speakers. You have to be a professional speaker to join. Okay. And I think it's the only Toastmasters group that you have to audition to get in. All right, I know I I founded one locally. I don't think it's around called Pro Toasties, which was similar, and they did have to audition. Okay, good. But, okay. but I know you went to see my friend Susan Rowan, so I thought you were in the NSA chapter. Yes, so what I do is I go to a lot of their meetings. I have okay. uh, a lot of friends, both in the Illinois chapter and in the Wisconsin chapter. And so I go to a lot of their meetings, but I never actually joined. And it's because you have to pick and choose. You can't do everything. I thought I wanted to do everything. So I think at one point I was in six networking groups and I was going to NSA meetings and I'm driving three hours one way to go to my professional speakers group in Chicago. And then I'm in a mastermind group of all professional speakers and we help each other. And I found that I was so busy going to meetings and I had great notes, but I had no time to implement. Exactly, good. All right, so let's do a quick review. And Paul, are there any questions or comments we need to know? Actually, we do have one question. Okay. From Jack Lavelle. He wants to know, how did the basis of facing hurdles translate into a speech for which companies would pay? Was the core message, was it the core mess, or what was, sorry, what was the core message that attracted them? Okay. So that is a very good question because when I first got in this business, I got an income tax return and I divided that income tax return in half. I hired a speech coach and with the other half, I joined Speaker University from NSA yeah. and I took that course. And I was told at that time that businesses don't pay for positive attitude, which is what I talk about. Yes. So I had to tweak the language. Mm. So I talk now, what I say is I speak about change resiliency, and facing challenges in your life. Mm. And then I say the results are higher productivity, better work ethics, you know, better results from, you, from your team. Okay. So you have to follow it with results. Good. And that's a very good point because, you, you of course, if you want to make a living, you have to sell it. So you have to sell them what they want to buy packaged in with your personal story or example. Very good. That was good. Yes. So if and, and, other, and, throw, in, throw in your questions because we try not to keep you too long. So certainly if you want your question asked, ans answered, ask it now. Yeah, good. So meanwhile, Nancy, uh, yeah, how fast did the paid talks come in at this point? You have to be patient. <laughs> you have to be patient. And it seems like all of a sudden everything opens up. So for uh, probably a, almost a couple of years, I was doing the libraries and just a few hundred yeah. here and a few hundred there. So you have to stick with it. And then eventually at one of the networking meetings, I met somebody for a while. Banks were hiring me. Uh, mm -hmm. Financial institutions were hiring me to come in and talk to their teams. And okay. before you go into a networking event or you, you set up a coffee with somebody, research their, their website and then pick and choose some of the words from their website that's important to them. And that's the words you use while writing your proposal. Okay, now that's a very good point to personalize how you get the businesses when you're there. And, and once you, you have an industry, it, it's very good. I know at different times in my life, I've been experts in death care. There are a lot of funeral, cremation, 
cemetery groups and then also manufactured housing and and a lot of these what you think is non-glamorous but yes i did a lot of banks for a while and credit unions for a while so that's very good you learned these lessons of maximizing these very early good well at what point nancy did you give up the day job well, actually, I gave up the day job about four years ago, yeah. and uh, my rule of three came back again. Um, a couple of very young girlfriends, I've been single about five years, and a couple of very young girlfriends encouraged me to do online dating, and I was never leaving Chicago ever, 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 and I goofed up on my profile, and a gentleman's <laughs> pro gentleman came through from Madison, Wisconsin, and I said, never, I am never leaving Chicago. And the third time his profile popped up, I sent him an invitation. And I live in Madison now. And we got married yeah. about four years ago. So, and, uh, so uh, the lesson is you might be looking for speaking engagements, but if you have young friends, you might find a husband. or a <laughs> <new> <laughs> yes. yes. So when I quit my day job to move to Madison, oh. uh, we decided I would do this full time and I was not going to be taking it. And that made a difference. Yeah. Scary okay. step, scary, scary step. But that made a difference because now I could spend the time on it. Yeah. All right. Now, is, is there such a, is it possible, because I couldn't give you this for my life, is it possible to know what an average week for you would look like as far as marketing or networking or speaking or reaching out to past clients? I could tell you what my goal is, but it usually yeah. will, uh, will change. So every day I try to spend 30 minutes a day on calling new clients, on reaching out to new clients. And I'll tell you why only 30 minutes, because it's doable. If I say an hour, I think it's too long, yeah. I don't have the time. 30 minutes you can do, and it may go longer than 30 minutes. But then something else may come up where somebody calls me and says, you know what, I'm very interested in your topic, can you send me a proposal? And sometimes the proposals could take quite some time to pull together. I know so that. every day I try to call or reach out to old clients or find new clients, whether they're in the credit market business or someone I met at a networking event. I do that about 30 minutes a day, and I try to go to at least three networking events a week. Mm -hmm. And then I, Madison's a smaller, much smaller town than Chicago. I go out for coffee a lot uh, to meet with new clients, probably once a day. So local clients. Yes, but you have to pick and choose. Mm -hmm. So local clients that are in a deciding factors that they can they first of all value and can afford speakers that they will bring into their company okay. so i don't meet with the local pizza guy that i met at the you know chamber event yeah. i chose a networking event that is all professional people they work for the banks they work for the financial institutions uh, they work for companies that are international or national uh, and go from there and my mastermind group i cannot stress a mastermind group strongly enough and I get, we share leads with each other through our mastermind group. Perfect. Well, this is quite a dramatic story. You tell it very well. Paula, are there any other specific questions? Yes, we have from Don Franceschi. Oh, yeah, one of my favorites. Yeah. <laughs> Love Don. Yeah. In, um, you see, do you specialize in keynotes or training talks? And what different approaches would you use for the two different talks? He says he prefers training. Okay. Well, uh, you already have it 90% done because you know what you want. Yeah. When I first started, I only wanted keynotes. I would only do keynotes. And I quickly learned that I needed to diversify a little bit. And so I now do training and I do workshops and I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I also teach at Madison College here in town. And so if I am looking for work, I look for keynotes because that's what I like to do. But for instance, when I went into Summit to talk about keynoting, he says what I really need is a half day workshop to teach my managers how to speak in front of their team. And I knew that I could do that. So I created a program for him and now I use that program for other businesses. 
So I like keynoting when I am doing the marketing. That's what I look for. But in the process of listening to somebody else, if they need a workshop or something else, and it's something I'm an expert at, then I will go ahead and do that as well. And what I would like to add to all our members watching live and the replay is listen to your clients and prospects and what they want. Yes. Develop an expertise because you will not be, and I was smart enough to know, you're not going to be the flavor of the month with speakers bureaus for more than 20 years. And believe me, I milked it to death for at least 20 years. But listening to my clients when they said, oh, Patricia, I liked your speech, but I loved how you delivered it. Can you teach our salespeople to speak that way? That opened a whole new level because people will invest in their salespeople when the economy is good and bad. Yes. And also the executive speech coaching, because the and I'm sure you have or you will find Nancy, they love you, but you follow up and they say, eh, we, we, we really did love you, but we're probably not going to be able to hire you back for another six years because we yes. don't repeat keynoters. But with executive speech coaching, with training their engineers, as I do with Nutanix, this is ongoing work. So develop your expertise. But whether your audience is two, six, 60, 600 or 6,000, can yes. you give a version of your expertise? And that's how you'll stay booked. So certainly, Nancy, you can promote what is your priority. However, if they loved your keynote, I bet they would love your training programs and your coaching. Yes. Get in there and then be versatile. Good. Well, our audience has hung with us, Paul. Is there another question? Nope. That's all for now. Okay, good. Well, and I know Nancy and Paul will put your email in. If anyone watches this later, you can certainly, in fact, in the Facebook live group, you can just tag Nancy and ask her the question and then everyone will see the answer. That's probably the best way. So, Nancy, I am off to my NSA convention next year as a 42-year member. So I'm glad you've got your support, and I look forward to a time when you are a card-carrying NSA member. <laughs> soon, soon. Yeah, but thank you very much for your expertise. So Thank you, Patricia. The, you start where you are. You maximize every opportunity. That is what you proved loud and clear and uh, if you have young friends you might be moving <laughs> <laughs> i'm stuck i'm i i'm i'm not going anywhere but you said that about chicago so who knows <laughs> that really the support and the mastermind group and this is what we are trying to do with our frip vt and our frip facebook community we are here to help each other. We all have different levels of expertise. And we certainly uh, do appreciate, Nancy, your contribution. So what is your walk away concluding comment of what you have learned that you would encourage us all to do, especially earlier in our careers? Oh, you know what? Just never, never, never give up. No matter how many times you want to throw in the tile, the towel and i'm going to leave you with one word and that's curious i did a tedx speech on this one word curious so instead of saying i can't do this or i've lost this i'm curious what it would be like if i did speak in front of a group i'm curious where my next client will come from i'm curious how great my next speech will be and what people it will touch stay with the word curious and just don't give up Thank you. You've inspired me. I'm calling a couple of old clients as soon as we hang <laughs> up. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Nancy. Patricia. See you online. And Nancy will be at the Toastmaster convention. If yes. any of you are going, please connect with her so you can connect in Chicago. In yes. August. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Nancy. Bye. Thanks, Paul. Bye -bye.